السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Allah is the greatest. 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 None has the right to be worshipped except Allah. Allah is the greatest. Allah is the greatest and all praise belongs to Allah alone. All praise is due to Allah. His bounty and kindness are limitless and He multiplies rewards for those who have Iman and perform their deeds in the best way. Allah is the greatest. He has no needs. His blessings reach all living creatures. His mercy encompasses all things and the goodness that comes from Him is never ending. Allah is the greatest. He is the ever-living, self-sufficient sustainer of all. He is neither affected by slumber nor sleep, and His generosity is not decreased by the passage of time. He does not tire from being asked, and He is not annoyed by anyone's persistence. Despite all the requests made of Him in many ways and languages, He does not mix any of them up. Allah deserves that His greatness be proclaimed as often as people assume ihram at the miqat and say the talbiyah. Allah deserves that His greatness be proclaimed as often as people enter Mecca in safety and perform tawaf and sa'i while making mention of Allah. Allah deserves that His greatness be proclaimed every time people stay in Arafah, devoting themselves to Him with humility, penitence, and sincerity in worship. Every time they remain in Muzdalifah calling upon him in earnest. And every time they stone the Jamarat and then either shave or shorten the hair on their heads. Allah is the greatest. Allah is the greatest. None has the right to be worshipped except him. Allah is the greatest. Allah is the greatest. And to him alone belongs all praise. May Allah grant commendation and protection to his messenger Muhammad. As well as to the messengers, eminent family, his immaculate wives, and also his companions and those who follow them until the day of resurrection. Servants of Allah, observe taqwa of Allah as he rightfully deserves by fulfilling his commands and avoiding his prohibitions. And remember that he always sees you whether you are in private or public. Here, from the minbar of the Grand Mosque in Mecca, I extend prayers and supplications to the leaders of our nation, the custodian of the two holy mosques. I pray that Allah grants him immense reward and continued well-being. I also pray to Allah to grant continued guidance to the deputy of our nation's leader. I also pray to Allah that he blesses the Ummah of Islam with much, much goodness and with an abundance of blessings. Allah is the greatest. Allah is the greatest. None has the right to be worshipped except Him. Allah is the greatest. Allah is the greatest. And to Him alone belongs all praise. Dear Muslims, today is the blessed day of Eid al-Adha, the day of the greater Hajj and the day on which Allah completed the revelation He would send and also completed the blessing of Islam. This was the day on which descended the statement of Allah, Today I have perfected your religion for you, I have completed my favor to you, and I am pleased with Islam as a religion for you. This passage occurs in Surah Al-Ma'idah, throughout which can be found various rulings pertaining to what is permissible and impermissible. That alludes to the fact that the foundations of Islam are a complete set of directives to be accepted as a whole not divided or treated selectively. Consequently, it is incorrect to accept only some parts of Islam and reject others. Thus, all praise is due to Allah 
for the blessing of Islam, which is the religion he is pleased with for us. Servants of Allah, one of the most virtuous acts of obedience to Allah and one of the greatest ways to draw nearer to Him is fulfilling the obligation of Hajj, which is one of Islam's five pillars. Hajj is an obligation for every Muslim, male and female, if they have the ability to perform it. Hajj contains worship performed with one's body and with one's property, and this is why it merits tremendous rewards. The Prophet, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, said, The reward for the accepted Hajj is nothing less than Jannah. Our world is experiencing exceptional circumstances this year resulting from the spread of the coronavirus and the dangers associated with it. Consequently, the government of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, under the leadership of custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman ibn Abdul Aziz, may Allah grant him continued protection, made the decision to let a limited number of worshippers perform Hajj this year. The decision was made to ensure the safety of those performing Hajj and safeguarding people's lives is one of Islam's major objectives. Allah the Most Exalted said, and do not kill yourselves. Indeed, Allah continually bestows His mercy upon you. The basic principles of Islam direct us to avert harms before they occur and to also strive to remove them if they have set in. This can be understood from the hadith that states harm is neither to be extended nor reciprocated. Among the beautiful elements of this religion is that when a Muslim intends to perform a righteous deed but is then unable to follow through for a legitimate reason, the reward for what he intended is still recorded for him. When a person's intentions are sincere, they can enable him to reach what his deeds alone do not reach. The eminent companion Jabir ibn Abdullah, may Allah be pleased with both of them, had narrated that some of the companions were with Allah's Messenger, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, during the expedition to Tabuk, and he told them, There are indeed in Al Medina groups of individuals who remained with you throughout every path you tread and every valley you traversed. This was said in reference to them being granted the same reward as those present, as understood from another narration of the hadith, which contains the wording, They shared with you in reward. That was the case because those who stay back only did so due to having a legitimate excuse. A wording of the hadith collected by Muslim says, they were detained by illness. Allah is the greatest, Allah is the greatest. None has the right to be worshipped except Him. Allah is the greatest, Allah is the greatest, and to Him alone belongs all praise. Servants of Allah, the current pandemic awakened people and their minds. It has driven souls to return to Allah and take recourse to Him, to be humble towards Allah, comply with His directives, sincerely devote all worship to Him, and be consistent in obeying Allah as well as His Messenger. May Allah grant Him commendation and protection. Thus, my dear brothers, you should make much mention of Allah, supplicate Him, and humble yourselves to Him. Allah said, sincerely call upon your Lord with full humility and do so in private. He does not love those who transgress the bounds He has set. Furthermore, you must not cause corruption upon the earth after Allah has put it in order. You must sincerely call upon Allah while fearing His punishment and hoping for His mercy. Allah's mercy is surely near those who strive to worship Him in the best way. Allah also said, Call upon me. If you do so, I will respond to you. Thus, dua, calling upon Allah, is an act of worship. There is no act more honorable to Allah than calling upon Him, and nothing can avert what Allah decreed besides calling upon Him. It is an act that avails a person regarding what has already happened as well as what has not yet happened. When a person opens the gates of dua, Allah will open the gates of mercy to him. One of the most virtuous acts of worship is making dua constantly while awaiting relief from Allah. Beseech your Lord for all your needs, large or small, short term or long term. O oh Allah, by your name, Al Hafiz, the Protector, we call upon you to protect our land as well as all lands of Muslims against every type of harm. We also beseech you to decree what is good for us after what has befallen us. My dear brothers in Islam, you must realize that there 
are people who are opponents to yourselves and your religion. Those who strongly dislike you and your brothers having the blessing of Islam. And those who detest you having safety, prosperity, tranquility, and stability. They endeavor to strip you of your blessings so that you would be the same as them. They look for any way to break apart your jama'ah, your collective that adheres to what is correct, to leave you dispersed, rip brothers apart, and sever the bond between the people of Islam and their leaders. Therefore, my dear Muslim brothers, be alert and cautious. Do not leave any room to accommodate misinformation or rumors. Beware of phrases like such and such is what the people are saying. Remember your obligation to obey the leader and authority regarding all that does not amount to disobeying Allah. Realize that doing so is necessary for every person who submits to Allah and Islam, and it amounts to being sincere to the leader and assisting him in fulfilling Allah's commands and avoiding Allah's prohibitions. Also realize that contending with the leader in authority is impermissible. In a hadith in the two Sahih collections, Abu Hurairah, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated that Allah's Messenger, may Allah grant him combination of protection, said, If someone obeys me, he obeys Allah. If someone disobeys me, he disobeys Allah. If someone obeys the leader in authority, he obeys me. And if someone disobeys the leader in authority, he disobeys me. A term in the collected a hadith with a Hassan chain of narration from Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with him, who stated that he heard Allah's Messenger, may Allah grant combination of protection, say, If a person degrades the leader in authority, Allah will indeed degrade that person. Thus, the leader is a shield and source of protection for those under his governance, and he bears many responsibilities and difficulties on their behalf. He tires himself so they can rest, stays awake so they can sleep, works hard so they can be happy, endeavors to attain what they are endeavors to attain what they require and strive to keep harms and dangers away from them. The leader in authority has better insight into what is best for his people and nation. He has better expertise when it comes to bringing about advantages and avoiding disadvantages, and he also has better knowledge regarding other governments and nations. Thus, it is necessary for us to love him for Allah's sake, support him, stand in solidarity with him, and remain sincere to him in all ways we can. Allah the Most Exalted said, People of Iman, obey Allah, obey the Messenger and those in authority among you. If you ever dispute about something, refer it back to Allah and the Messenger, if you truly have Iman in Allah and the Last Day. Doing so is better than disputing or acting based on mere opinion, and it will produce the best outcome. May Allah bless all of us by the glorious Qur'an and the guidance of His Messenger. May Allah enable us to glean benefit from those sources and the evidences and wisdom they contain. Allah is the greatest. Allah is the greatest. None has the right to be worshipped except Allah. Allah is the greatest. Allah is the greatest. And all praise belongs to Allah alone. All praise and gratitude are due to Allah for His kindness, favor, and blessings. I bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah alone without any partner. And I bear witness that Muhammad is Allah's worshipping servant and messenger. May Allah grant commendation and protection to His messenger as well as to the messengers, family, companions, and brothers in Islam. Allah is the greatest. Allah is the greatest. None has the right to be worshipped except Him. Allah is the greatest, Allah is the greatest, and to Him alone belongs all praise. Servants of Allah, every set of people has days which it commemorates repeatedly at specific times. As for us, the people of Islam, we have two such days, Eid al-Adha and Eid al-Fitr. Anas, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated that when Allah's Messenger, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, came to a Medina, there were two designated days the people had for enjoyment. He asked, what are these two days? 
The people replied, We used to enjoy ourselves on them during Jahiliyyah, the era of ignorance prior to Islam. Allah's Messenger, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, then told them, Allah has indeed given you a substitute for them that is even better than them, Eid al-Anha and Eid al-Fitr. Part of the guidance of the Prophet, may Allah grant him commendation and protection regarding Eid was that if it fell on a Friday, he would perform the Eid prayer as well as the Friday prayer. However, in the case of people who attended the Eid prayer, he granted them the concession to not attend the Friday prayer and instructed them to pray Dhuhr instead at its usual time. And the best guidance is that of the Prophet. May Allah grant him commendation and protection. This day of Eid is the most virtuous of days to Allah. The Prophet, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, said, The greatest of days to Allah is the day of sacrifice, and then the day when people are settled in Mina. This is collected by Abu Dawood. The day when people are settled in Mina is the 11th of the Hijjah, the day immediately following the day of sacrifice. And the day of sacrifice is the first of the days of Eid, and it is the day of the Greater Hajj. It was given that name because several major acts of worship are performed on it, such as being in Muzdalifah, stoning Jamrat al-Aqaba, offering one's sacrifice, shaving one's head, performing Tawaf al-Ifada, and performing the Eid prayer. In addition, it is recommended to set out early to the Eid prayer and go from one route and return from another. It is also recommended to mention words of prayer to each other for Eid by saying what was narrated by Jubair ibn Nufayr. He said, when the companions of Allah's Messenger, may Allah grant commendation and protection, met each other on Eid, they would say to one another, Taqabbal Allahu minna wa minkum. We pray that Allah accepts the deeds that we ourselves performed and the deeds that you performed as well. The time for exchanging words such as those is after the Eid prayer, as done by the companions. Among the most important acts of worship on this day is offering a sacrifice after the Eid prayer. The Prophet, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, said during a sermon he delivered, the first thing with which we begin this day of ours is that we pray, then return, and then sacrifice. Anyone who does that has complied with our sunnah. This is collected by Bukhari. On this day, it is encouraged to show happiness, to uphold ties of kinship, to do away with differences and grudges, to pardon others, and to generous and accommodating towards one's dependents and also make them happy. There is nothing wrong with forms of playing and recreation since the teachings of our religion allow for that. It is also encouraged to say the takbir after the five daily prayers beginning from Fajr on the day of Arafah until the end of the third day of Tashriq, which is the fourth day of Eid. One of the wordings that can be said is, Allah is the greatest, Allah is the greatest, none has the right to be worshipped except Him. Allah is the greatest, Allah is the greatest, and to Him alone belongs all praise. Servants of Allah, let this Eid of yours be one of happiness and uphold the acts of worship prescribed by your religion. In addition, be kind to the poor and needy, and relieve them of needing to ask of anyone on this day. Hope for Allah's reward, and remember that Allah's mercy is always near to those who strive to worship Allah in the best way. We beseech Allah to bless all of us with acceptance of our deeds, protection against adversities and forgiveness for wrongdoing. In conclusion, remember that Allah 
has given us an instruction in which he said, Indeed, Allah and his angels remember the instruction Allah gave us in which he said, Indeed, Allah grants commendation to his messenger and the angels invoke Allah to grant the messenger even further commendation. People of Iman invoke Allah to grant the Prophet commendation and to grant him protection as well. O Allah, grant your commendation and protection to your messenger as well as to his family and companions. O Allah, be pleased with your messengers, four successors, Abu Bakr, Omar, Uthman, and Ali, as well as all of the messengers, family, companions, and those who continue following their path. O Allah, most pardoning and forgiving, be pleased with us along with them by your pardon, favor, and kindness. O Allah, grant strength to Islam and those who submit to you in Islam. O Allah, grant your guidance to our leader, the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman ibn Abdul Aziz. O Allah, grant him continued direction and well-being. O Allah, protect him and direct his government to do what pleases you and enable them to succeed in serving those who have come as your guests to worship you. O oh Allah, you are the one who grants us support and assistance. It is by you that we attain strength and it is from you that we seek relief. O oh Allah, we call upon you to assist our security personnel who defend our nation. O oh Allah, we call upon you to protect those who have come to perform Hajj. We ask you to grant them well-being and enable them to complete Hajj and return to their homelands safety. O oh Allah, we call upon you to relieve us from the hardships that we are facing and we acknowledge our inability before you. O oh Allah, we beseech you for your mercy that encompasses all things. O oh Allah, we ask you to avert from us dangers, ills, and harms. O oh Allah, we place our hope in you. O oh Allah, you indeed have the ability to do all things. We implore you to direct us back to you. O oh Allah, we seek refuge with you against your torment. O oh Allah, we seek refuge with you against all forms of harm. O oh Allah, we seek refuge with you against your blessings being taken away from us and changing to adversity. O oh Allah, we call upon you for your protection at all times. Allah is the greatest. Allah is the greatest. Allah is greater than anything that we could ever fear. Servants of Allah, remember that Allah instructs you to do all that is upright and correct and he forbids you from all that is wrong and sinful. Remember that when you are grateful to Allah, he will grant you even more of his blessings. And always remember that Allah has complete knowledge of everything that you do.